hello. <clears throat> hello and welcome to ER Emotional Response. This is Ivory, Life Coaching with Ink. How are you doing tonight? Hello. I'm sorry for the late upload and it's mainly because a lot of things was going on today and I do apologize. My schedule got a bit intense, but as always, I record because I say I will deliver on Tuesdays and Thursdays, and that is just what I'm doing. Hello. Now, we covered the series on love, and I really enjoyed it. Um, it was my longest series I ever did. It was a six-part series, and I know I grew from it, so I know there are others out there that have grown from it and were enlightened and even became more inquisitive to know about the different aspects of love, not just when it comes to the love languages, but also the different levels, as well as understanding people's backgrounds and why they can only love to the extent that they have experienced love. So that was awesome. I am diving back into a topic that I have covered in two different angles earlier, but now I'm diving back into it. And I can actually say that part of my motivation has been because of so much that has been going on in the news and in society and how people have been mismanaging their emotions when it comes to this topic and their violent acts that are happening. And I say 99% of the time it could be avoided if your emotions are managed correctly. So I want to introduce the topic of sex. Now we covered before knowing your sexuality and the difference between sexuality and identity. There is a total difference. You don't sit down with someone and just tell them everything that goes on with you sexually. No, when you sit down with someone, you tell them what's going on with you as a person, your identity, who you are. Your identity is not found in your sexuality. So that segment was very necessary, especially in this day and age. And then I covered sex when it came when it came to understanding love and putting the love component in and how comfortability is built when you're exploring the different realms of sex when you have a loving relationship. It's safe to say that after you've known a person for quite some time, you feel more comfortable to explore the more freakier side of sex compared to meeting someone in a day and then turning around and doing things. Not to say things can't happen because with liquor involved and other substances, people are more inclined to be open to share themselves sexually in ways that they never did before. Or if cheating is involved and you're in a marital relationship or a committed relationship, you find yourself with the side piece, the however you label it. In Philly, we label it John. However, this person is on your side hip or side notion, whatever side notion that you make the person, you feel more inclined to do crazier stuff with them because it's more intense because I think the sneakiness of the act invites you to be more freakier. It's weird like that. But I have heard different people 
explore things sexually with people that they're not in committed relationships with and be straight prudes when they're in committed relationships. So, and that could happen to girls or guys. So we talked about that and there are exceptions to the rules. It's not never an all inclusive rule. And I always stress that because Everybody has different experiences and someone you can meet tomorrow, they can share an experience that will blow your mind on a theory that you held so dear to your heart and so concrete. And then they come along and share an experience that blows that out the water. So you never want to walk around saying everything is all inclusive. You can say there are more chances. There are a lot of, there is a higher percentage um, anything that doc directs the person to know that there are exceptions to the rule. So we dived into love versus um, a person that you really don't know intimately and you have sex with them. So tonight, We are talking about sex again, but sex when it comes to emotions. Emotions, the emotional component behind sex. And mainly because people misconstrue signals, body language, words said to them, words not said to them. And... We have to talk about this mainly because of the three things that come out of it when you don't talk about it, when you don't talk about it. And one of the three main things that come out of it when you don't talk about it is obsession, possession, and emotional frenzy. Now, sex, sex is a beautiful thing. Sex is so beautiful that it releases certain chemicals in the brain that relaxes you. That's why after certain sexual experiences, it's easier for you to go to sleep. Sex is... as high of a euphoric experience as eating something so delightful like chocolate and being consumed with the experience. And studies have said, shown that they release the same chemicals in the brain eating chocolate and having sex. However, it's not all inclusive. I want to dive in this topic mainly because people are being hurt, people are being damaged, people are walking away confused, people are becoming delusional. And thinking things are more than what they are. And so when we talk about emotional management, we talk about knowing yourself emotionally, knowing your ups and your downs, what works for you, what doesn't work for others. And it is safe to say that Abstaining from sex when you're not emotionally stable is one of the most healthiest things you can do. When you know you're out of whack, when you know you're off emotionally, it's safe to abstain. Because one thing about anything that's unstable, if it's a boat, if it's a car, if it's unstable, that means Anything is bound to pop off. And so 
if you are operating with something that's emotionally not stable, you can't control what happens if you take that emotionally unstable thing to the limit. And so, you know, there are even more tightened limits when you're emotionally unstable. You have to stop and say, okay, I used to can handle this. I can't. I've been doing this, but I can't right now. And it not only saves you, but it saves others. And for those that examine themselves to be emotionally unstable, it's also safe to verbalize that you're not entertaining anyone physically because you don't trust where things might go with you emotionally because you already had an emotional state. When there's instability going on with a car, there are different warnings that come up on a car, different alerts. Check your stability. And as a human, you need to check your stability. Just when you think you can handle something, you might not be able to really handle it. And that's fine. You're not anything, any less of a human, any less of an adult by vocalizing that you can't handle certain things. I think the most dangerous thing that people walk around with is the idea that they can handle everything. But you are your most powerful. You are at your most powerful state when you know your limits. When you know what you can handle, what you can't handle. And even though things might appeal to you or people might appeal to you, you have to say in your heart of hearts, Right now is not the time. So we're talking about emotions when it comes to sex. And un- what's the word I'm looking for? Not un, but impromptu, I interviewed two different people a male and a female when it came to emotions and this this topic of sex. And both of them declared different things. And I need to share it mainly because sometimes women walk around with the idea that they know men so much that they assume certain things. And vice versa, men walk around with the idea that they know women so much that they assume certain things. And so I will share what I got from both interviews with the intentions that people will be enlightened, number one. People will realize this is just a view from one person. And it's not all inclusive. So you can come across a man that's contrary. Or you can come across a female that's contrary. 